all set up. So I can be able to go home tomorrow. Uh, Daddy's gonna be so excited. That killed him. And that's the GFC. It really is. Well, it's the subprime crisis which helped trigger the GFC. Ameriquest was one of the turkey American mortgage brokers who gave loans to people who should never have had them. The tagline on their ads, they made great ads, really bad loans. Um, the tagline on their ads, don't judge too quickly, we won't. No job, no income, no assets, no worries, have a ninja loan. And Ameriquest and their peers made those loans in the hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars. The investment banks and ratings agencies sprinkled pixie dust over them and farmed them out around the world until you have councils and charities in Australia carrying their rubbish on their books still. And when it all hit the fan, September 2008, three years ago next month, when Lehman Brothers went under, global finance froze because nobody knew where those dud loans really were. And we looked over the edge of something unbelievably bad, another Great Depression. But we, the world didn't have a Great Depression, did it? It still had the Great Recession. The North Atlantic certainly had the Great Recession. But over the hill came the posse, the world's central banks and governments with stimulus packages, and a depression was avoided. Australia didn't even have a recession. Australia, in fact, had the mildest of slowdowns. Yet Australian, the Australian psyche, particularly, I think, in, in business circles and investor circles, is still carrying scars as if we have had something tough happen to us. And we haven't. The reason, I think, is that we have lost most of our ability to keep perspective. We have lost the ability to look through the headlines and see what is really happening in this economy. And that is costing many of us dearly. Because what is happening in this economy is the biggest restructuring since the, the, the original minerals boom. The gold rush of the 1850s. It is that big, it is fundamentally changing every industry in this country. Those who get it have the opportunity to do fabulously well. Those who don't will provide the opportunities for the others. It's very easy to lose perspective because of a number of reasons. One, yes, you can always blame the media um, because bad news is what we like. Bad news, scary news, scary headlines. It makes people read TV, read newspapers and watch TV shows. I know a lot about scary headlines because I've written thousands of them. I feel a bit guilty about it these days. Um, there is never any danger that you will miss out on hearing any bad news. <laughs> You'll get it. There is a big danger you will actually miss out on seeing the big picture. It's made worse in Australia by the extremely adversarial nature of politics, um, at the federal level in particular. It's the job of the opposition to oppose, but this opposition opposes everything. You know, all governments get some things right, some things wrong. You get the impression the federal government's never got anything right, when in fact its macro policy has been pretty good. And it's made worse again by the fact that most of the newspapers in the country are owned by Rupert Murdoch, who has been running a pretty unceasing campaign against federal labour. So we lose perspective and we don't see the reality. I want to give you a couple of quick examples of that to get into where we are now and what's really happening with such headlines as the retail bust and the mining boom. What were we told? Um, peak lying season last year, also called the federal election. Um, what we all told was the biggest threat to the Australian economy, the thing that was going to enslave your grandchildren. Oh, it was the big scary deficit. Or was it? So I think it's a bit like two blokes in the pub passing the time. One says to the other, you know what I saw on TV last night? Lions have sex 15 or 16 times a night. The other bloke says, oh, bugger, I've just joined Lot Rotary. <laughs> I think it's important to be able to tell just in a Rotarian, a lion, if you're ever visiting Africa, I think it's important to understand the whole federal deficit nonsense. Um, stole this graph from the federal budget in May. That must be Australia down the end because it's in gold and it's back in surplus in 2012-13. But a billion dollars one way or the other really doesn't matter. <coughs> the rest of the developed world certainly does matter. The rest of the developed world, which is up to its eyeballs in debt, and as we've seen in the last couple of weeks, um, having a hell of a time trying to reach any sort of rational political answer to the problem they have. 
you want to worry about something, worry about the US and Europe and, and the US, but I don't because they don't really matter. We have sunk, though, in this belief that there was something wrong with our deficit, going into deficit during the GFC, when it was a totally rational thing to do. It meant the unemployment rate bottomed out at 5.8%. Where the unemployment rate had um, peaked, sorry, it peaked at 5.8%, the level at which it had bottomed out in the two previous cycles. Because the thing about deficits and surpluses isn't whether you got one, it's the movement between them that impacts on the economy. I don't want to get bogged down in the economics of it, but it's important to understand. Um, you see, when Wayne Swan stood up to deliver his budget in May, it worried me that he was walking in Peter Costello's shoes from 2006. May 2006, the unemployment rate was 4.9%. May 2011, 4.9%. Uh, yeah, the seasonally adjusted figure went up last night, uh, last month to 5.1%. Forget the seasonally adjusted figure, it jumps around too much. The trend figure's 5%, has been for a few months. Home mortgage, the variable standard home mortgage rate. May 2006, 7.55%. It went up to 7.8% the next month, which is what it is now. I just hope none of you are silly enough to be paying that, because right now the banks are actually competing for your business. If, uh, if you haven't reviewed what you're paying on your mortgage in the last year, uh, for heaven's sake, ring up another bank and ask them what the best deal is. You should be able to pick up one now if you've got a decent uh, credit rating and you're not self-employed at just under 7%. However, that's the headline rate, that variable rate. The RBA's core inflation rate back then was 2.6%. In the year to June 30, the, uh, the RBA's core inflation rate, 2.7%. Now. What worried me about that was what happened next from May 2006. Oh, Peter Costello was running surpluses. He was a hero. And it was dud fiscal policy. Because two years later, the unemployment rate was down to 4.2%. Effectively full employment. That rate, anyone who really wants a job can get one. Some people who don't want jobs have them. And you've probably worked with those people from time to time. <laughs> um, the home loan mortgage rate, the headline mortgage rate was 9.45%. And it went up in July of 2008 to 9.6%. It's a good trivial pursuit question. Ask anyone what was the, uh, the headline home mortgage rate in July, August 2008, no one's going to say 9.6% because we can't remember back that far. We're good for about two weeks and that's about all. Goldfish look smart by comparison. <laughs> and the RBA's core inflation rate was out of control at 4.1% which is why they were bashing us over here with interest rates. There was a great insight provided by a visiting IMF economist. Unfortunately, it was an off-the-record comment, but he was being given a briefing on the Australian economy by the chief economist, one of the big four banks, a friend of mine, who went through all the stuff about Australia and how good we were. And at the end of it all, the IMF bloke said, so, the GFC saved Australia. And my mate said, now listen, pal, you weren't listening. We were brilliant. We dodged the bullet. We're so smart. And the IMF bloke said, no. The GFC saved Australia because Australia was heading for its standard reserve bank interest rate induced recession. We were running at an unsustainable bubbling level that most of the population now looks back on with this fond nostalgia of the good old days when we were about to go to hell and didn't know it. The GFC ended up giving Australia an extremely soft landing. But we don't think of it that way, because we're stupid. Um, so this graph from, from Westpac, they stole it from everyone else. The thing about, about fiscal policy is fiscal drag. It's not whether you have a surplus or a deficit per se. Yes, in a commodities boom, you should be running a surplus. But it's the movement between them that matters. So that big leg down there, that was the government stimulus as the GFC hit. That was the cash flash, the $900 checks and the, and the dreaded pink bats and the, and the school sheds and a quarter of the price of my new car. Thank you very much, Kevin. I appreciate it. Um, and still stimulus. Here we are this year. We are still in deficit. We are still in deficit. But the movement towards surplus this financial year is taking two percentage points off Australia's economic growth. 